Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Ingested, The Tide of Death and Fractured Dreams, out April 5th on Metal Blade Records. The album has 10 tracks, 45 minutes in length, and this is the band's seventh full-length studio album. They are a UK death metal band. To me, this is a design, this is a record that understands exactly what it has, what it offers, and how best to present it to an audience that's going to be able to digest it and appreciate it, not just from first to last song, but even beyond that. If you listen to this album on repeat, you want to make sure that the album doesn't overburden the listener at any given time. And considering the brutality of the band, considering the brutality of their sound, it would be really easy to lose track of that and make this a very condensed record. It's not the case. This album is super textured and the structure of the album allows that texture of sound to really shine through. There are some key songs on this record that allow you to see how well balanced the design is and how much quality that design then gives to the overall experience. You look at a song like Niminous, an instrumental track that breaks the record, very melodic instrumental track that breaks the record in two. On one side of that track, you have a song featuring Josh Middleton of Silosis. On the other side of that track, you have a song featuring Mark Hunter of Chimera. Then at the end of the record, you have A Path Once Lost. This is the most unique song that the record offers. It starts off extremely melancholic with clean vocals, and then you see the aggression coming in, but allowing those clean vocals to remain on through key periods of the song in order for not only the melancholy, but the overall, um, the overall atmosphere that that melancholy creates to become the main factor of what drives this song. These tracks really define this album, really define the design, really define the experience. Because in between them and around them, you have that brutality of, of ingested coming through quite easily. So if the album didn't have these songs, the overall texture of the sound and the overall experience of the sound would have been completely lost. These songs do wonders, not just for what they give, but they do wonders for what the overall album is all about. So great design in terms of understanding the material, understanding the songs, and how better to present it to their audience, to their fans. Moving into the sound, I mean, I already mentioned quite a bit about it. It's definitely a very textured record. I would say that this is perhaps the most widely textured, textured album that Ingested has ever created. This is definitely an album that's not boxed in. It's definitely an album that's not dense. And it's definitely an album that is not just brutal for the sake of being brutal or try to push the envelope on how brutal they can go. This album showcases a lot more maturity, showcases a lot more diversity. Not taking anything away from the DNA of the band, not taking anything away from the brutality of the band, but rather integrating that brutality with other elements that allow the heavier side of the band to feel even heavier, but it also allows the sound on the other side to be a little bit easier to approach. This is a simple record at times. It has simple processes, it has simple designs, it has simple songs. It's an album that allows the listener to really capture it and understand it at the first go. You don't have to dive super deep into it in order to get the most out of it. So it's a record that sound-wise, from a death metal standpoint, it stays in that fine line between the brutality of the band and between perhaps a sound that's more accessible to others that might not be so interested in a, just a very heavy album from beginning to end. Because I honestly feel a lot of the records that have that sort of experience, they lose themselves within themselves. When you get to the end of the album, you're like, wow, that was a freaking heavy and brutal record. But you almost can't remember a single song. Everything kind of blends uh, together. Everything becomes a mush. This record doesn't have that from a design standpoint, and then obviously the design is just a representation of the sound. You're able to digest these songs and you're able to get the most out of each single one of them and seeing exactly what the fingerprint of the sound on each track is all about, identifying them as their own individualities, but then really enjoying the roller coaster ride of sound that it's created from beginning to end. A sound that lives off the back of two key elements, of course, drums and guitars. The guitars on this record are phenomenal. Not overly technical, not overly complicated, 
but enough for you to see how dynamic they are and how much they offer to an album like this. You see the heavier side of the guitars. This is a chunky sounding album. When the guitars are heavy and subtly heavy and pairing up really well with the drum sound in order to emphasize that same heaviness, you could find that sound to be very chunky. You can find the guitars to be very chunky. But what they also do is they allow the guitar sound to be penetrating, to be driven, to be sinister, to be somber, to be melancholic, and allow those sounds to cut through the overall thickness that the guitars are also giving. There's a lot of dualities, there's a lot of different layers as far as the guitar sound is concerned, but they're not necessarily compressed together. They're nicely placed in the mix so that you can appreciate all of them and you can appreciate how they interact with one another, really feeding off of one another, uh, but always using that more heavy, uh, thick sound as the bass line that moves the guitar sound across each and every single song. But great guitar work uh, from start to finish. This album has outstanding sound from that perspective. It's very alive. The guitars are very alive. They don't feel static. They don't feel in one place. They have a lot of movement uh, from one side to the other and they always also offer a sense of consistency. So it's a very lively album from a guitar sound standpoint. Now the drums help define that big sound. They help define that thickness. They help define the overall volume that creates heaviness on this record. But they feel so full. They're not just heavy coming at you with this, with this aggression, with this intensity. They're heavy but they have a width to them. The drums sound really wide on this album and because they sound wide and they're big at the exact same track, uh, same time, that gives incredible volume and it, get, it gives incredible aggression to the way the album comes across and to the way the album sounds. The, the, the drum sound really elevates the guitars, working really well in parallel, but also allowing the guitars to, to cut it through, like I said earlier, and creating more of that dynamic aroma, that guitar texture that is only possible if you have that strong definition of what the drums are providing across all 10 tracks. I honestly really enjoyed those two elements, those two sounds. They felt very rich, they felt very alive, they felt very energetic. Um, they, they felt like they were, they, they had something to show and they had an intent in what they were showing you. Always moving, a, a lot of movement in this record as far as guitars and drums are concerned. Now as far as vocals goes, Obviously you have two tracks with guest vocals, Josh Middleton and Mark Hunter. I, I thought that they used them perfectly on this on, on this record, on those two tracks, really getting the most out of them and getting the most out of their own unique characteristics. And that helps those tracks separate themselves from the tracks around that have similar, similar dynamics, that have similar sound, that have similar heaviness. So it's a nice way to create ebbs and flows within a record without changing too much the sonic perspective of the tracks and of the overall album. But outside of that, Jason is really phenomenal on this album. He comes alive on this record. Uh, those clean vocals and A Path Once Lost, man, he needs to do more of those. Those were just something unbelievable. It had, it had so much warmth, but at the same time, so much despair. There was so much pain in that delivery. And I thought the overall record from a vocal standpoint is really filled with pain and, and anguish. Uh, it comes across most often than not in a form of aggression, in a form of heaviness and intensity, which matches the overall idea of the album and the overall experience of the album really well. But this is an album where vocally he felt, uh, to me, he felt very loose, very comfortable, not necessarily pushing himself, not necessarily uh, having uh, uh, something in mind that he wanted to create, but rather just going with the flow, just going where the songs were taking him, almost like he was singing in the shower. It felt very natural, it just felt almost like one take style approach from a vocal standpoint. And when you deliver vocals like that, uh, it, it brings a certain, it brings certain characteristics into the forefront. It, it, it brings certain emotions, allows the emotions to bubble up to the surface. And that always gives an extra spice. It always gives an extra umph to the overall record. And this album definitely does that. An album that in my humble opinion is my definitely favorite from Ingested. And I really enjoy their previous records, specifically the last one. But this album is not as compact. It's an album that has a lot more life in it. Showcases you a lot more different sides of the band. 
uh, while still remaining brutal all the way through, just really showing you that you can be brutal, but showing different ways of creating that brutality. This is a very dynamic record, a record that I that I enjoy listening to, that I'm, I don't feel bored, I don't feel uh, overburdened by it. It, it. It's a record that has great life, great energy all around and throws you a couple of curveballs, which is always good on any record. You want to feel surprised, uh, but you still want to feel like the band is not steering too far away from their DNA. And that's exactly what this album is all about. Now, as far as favorite songs are concerned, let's start off with Where No Lights Shine. This is a very sinister track. There's a lot of sinister sounding songs on this album, but this is one that uh, allows that that atmosphere, that, that impression to really simmer and, and, and just bubble all the way up to the top. And, and it stays true throughout the entire song sometimes a little bit more noticeable than others, specifically in the choruses, definitely more noticeable in the chorus because of the guitar melody brings that somber vibe, that sinister vibe into the forefront. In the verses, the song is a little bit more compact, a little bit more heavy, and you don't have as much of that, at least not sonically. You get some of that more from the lyrical content and obviously the way the vocals come across, but it's a song that has uh, a, a great texture to it as most songs on this record do and it's a track that while having these nice ebbs and flows between verses and chorus feels very balanced. A guitar driven song, a guitar focused song with a chorus that really pops and that has a great guitar impact in it. Next we have Expect to Fail featuring Josh Middleton of Silosis. Super driven song, heavy drums, the drums are powerful on this track. The guitars push the song forward with the help of the drums behind it and the vocals match that same energy. There's always this feeling of this great wall of sound with the guitars piercing through, breaking through, cutting through, uh, which allows the song on one hand to stay consistent with its heaviness, with its power, with its volume, but at the same time have great movement within it. There are a few pauses within this song that allows the vocals to kick in and to kick in into a different gear and for you to really absorb the guest vocalist and what he brings to the track and overall creating a really nice dynamic between the two of them but allowing the sound to really give them room to shine. This is a track that knows exactly when to slow things down so that the vocals can jump in and that you can get the most out of the guest vocalist that's on the song itself. Last but definitely not least, in nothingness, the other feature track with Mark Hunter of Chimera. This is a heavy, methodic track at times, still with that great drum sound, still with that great guitar, guitar follow through that adds to that overall drum heaviness and still has some moments where you could see the guitars pushing through and breaking through uh, with a little bit more of a somber, melodic existence within the chorus that definitely shines through and jumps up where you see Mark's vocals come in and have a more defining impact because that somber melody that, that exists within the chorus is really emphasized by his delivery and by his vocals. But it's a track that just has still great chunkiness in that guitar riff that's the main, uh, the main spinal cord of the track with the drums uh, emphasizing that overall thickness and then amazing vocals between both of them. Uh, the track that feels more like a duet out of the two songs that have a guest vocalist. This track has a little bit more of that dynamic. It has a little bit more ebbs and flows vocally. It feels that it has more movement from that standpoint than it does perhaps from a, a sonic perspective. It has amazing sound, but it's not a song that's driven by its sound. It's, ra it's rather driven by the vocal dynamics that are put together by the two vocalists. This is it. This is the latest from Ingested. I hope you enjoy the album. I hope you enjoy this review. Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on the album, on the singles, and I'll see you all at the next video. Take care, guys.